Welcome back to Mastering JavaScript, and we're in the process of building a JavaScript library. But before we really could do that, there's really two main topics that we have to take care of, and they both relate to cross-browser development. The first of them is things that relate to how do we build our JavaScript in a way that will work to all different JavaScript versions. We're going to then, through that question, going to start from creating an onload project. Once we do that, we're going to ask ourselves, is this really the best solution? Although it works on all browsers, is this the best? We're then going to approach, once we get that topic covered, before we wrap up this topic, we'll see how could we use Modernizer, a plugin, a third-party tool, to help us cut down on our need to figure out availability of features, making our code a lot easier than to work on. Right now, we're really talking about should we target to a specific JavaScript version? Should we focus to a specific feature as it's getting available? And that's really the answer is yes. Instead of asking what version of the browser, we want to usually try to ask ourselves, does this feature exist? If it doesn't exist, let's do something else. Now, we're not going to solve this problem right away in this lecture. We're actually going to break it down into two steps. And I want to start with a workaround because some features are not detectable. Okay, so we're going to leave that there. So in some scenarios, there is no way to detect if a feature exists or not. And we're going to see that in the next lecture, followed by the lecture after that, where we're going to actually look at specific features and how to detect those specific features. But before we wrap up this lecture, what I want to do is I want to just create an onload and kind of bring the foray for this session. So go into your source code, and I just want to make sure, Oto, that if you want to follow along with me, then start in the start file inside of section 2. If you just want to see what I've created and then, then go right in there into the end file. Now, go ahead into your JavaScript. We have here a file called script.js that is currently empty. And I want to go ahead and just start typing here a little bit, and then we're going to talk about the differences between them. And this is kind of like a you should know already, but if you don't, then we're going to make sure that you do right now. So if I set a document function, and I go ahead and just copy paste it just to save us time for our document onload and our window onload. Now, document onload is not going to appear and it's not going to work for us, although historically there was a difference between document onload and window onload. Historically, document onload would load up whenever the DOM or the do page itself was loaded minus all the external resources, while the window would load only after everything was loaded. And in general, that is really the rule right now. Only this, most browsers drop support for document onload. And if we go ahead into our Firefox, and I'm just gonna go ahead here and save it for a second, and I click on refresh, let me just uh, go into my console, You'll see that my window is loaded was triggered, but the document was not. This is really where we start off with our first question and our first problem. So problem number one is in many cases, there's going to be a lot of external resources. There's going to be a lot of images. There's going to be a lot of stuff on our page. And we would really love to have a solution that would be similar to the document on load. But unfortunately, there is no solution that is tight net that would work on every single browser. That's our first problem that we said we want to talk about. We want to figure out a solution. Our second problem is that when we're working with callbacks, and in this case, this is a callback, and I'm using the window on load, but maybe another application or another script that I have is using the window on load as well. And in this case, if I have your two on loads, and I'm just going to go ahead here and just copy here the window on load, second window on load, and I'm just going to put your window loaded and two. And if I go ahead and refresh this, look at the problem that we're going to have here. We're only getting the second on load. We're not getting the first one. And the reason is, is because this is a property or a method, really. And it, all that's really happening is that whenever the load happens, it's triggering whatever's here. And what I really just did is in line nine, I overrode everything that was in line five. So this doesn't even exist anymore. And that could be a really major problem, especially when you're starting to build a library and you want to make sure that you're not going to delete other people's code. So in general, we might not want to work with onloads, but in some situations, maybe this situation, we have to work with an onload. In the next lecture, what I'm going to do is we're going to go back to the sample and we're going to continue to try to solve this first problem with onload to create an onload that will always call back, even if we're overriding it by creating method for us to basically store those onloads instead of calling it direct. So let's take a look at it in the next lecture.